I have a very beautiful Persian cat. Her name oh, is Mimi. Oh, okay. No, her name is Mimi. And, is uh, Mimi she... the three-legged cat? That's right. She's three legs. Yes, right? I know. <laughs> there is Mimi. Hello, Mimi. Mimi. Nice to meet you, Miss Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> she is adorable. At the moment. I've been lucky to be living uh, close to nature. Um, in fact, whereas my present abode is on on top of the hill, and yes. uh, the trees are all below me, but when yes. I first came to live up here, I was in amongst the trees, which uh -huh. is where I could see a lot of bird life and uh -huh. small animals, even the odd leopard. <laughs> um, so, uh, and as you say, animals are still a part of the primeval world, a part of nature that we have left behind in a way um, Absolutely. Uh, by, the, by, by the and the urban spread as it keeps creeping and pushing away the, the forest and the jungle um, you know is diminishing the the planet uh, as 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 it was first created as a green and wonderful place and perhaps a unique one we don't as yet know of any other planet which is so well forested and so many beautiful streams, animals, all kinds of creatures. Absolutely. And um, don't think, not much is done to preserve it, as you say. Um, so in our small way, we must do what we can. Huh? And, uh, Absolutely. And your books do that. To, and well I'm so glad for this because a lot of children, specifically in uh, the children who live in the cities, for them, this is such a treat, you see. Yeah. My sons, we live in the Alps. They are used to animals being around. We have a bunny, we have horses, and and uh, you know we have a cat who mm -hmm. who has adopted us as a family. But you know when when we lived back in Dubai, uh, mm -hmm. my children had no idea of a life in the mountains with animals around them. Mm -hmm. And you know when they when they read this, the, the first thing one of the twins told me was that you know mom. Um, if I read this back in Dubai, you know, I, it yes. would actually give me a glimpse of my life in Austria, back home in Austria and how I would actually want to live. And that gave me the idea why this book is so important for children to read, because it gives them this, that a life like this closer to nature and closer to pets is possible. And yes. uh, the simplicity of this life is, it, is, is, is now a luxury. You know that that, that is only seen in movies. And coming back <laughs> to your book, um, I I wanted to ask you one question. It, it seems like to me Ramu was inspired by a real life encounter. Was it Ramu's character inspired by a real life encounter? A, a little bit, yes, uh, because <laughs> we did behind the bungalow and in Dehradun, uh, there was this a pond, and uh, yes. uh, the boy would come with his buffaloes it was a it it wasn't part of our property it was a sort of common pond but uh, I see, yes, I but understand. i would sometimes venture forth or i'd be adventurous and you know go exploring uh as i used to when i was what, 10 11 i'm very curious to know that if you ever tried finding out what happened to your friend ramu <laughs> when you returned uh, after uh, that year with grandparents i was Went, went to boarding school in Simla. I see. Then, um, then I went to live with my father briefly in Delhi. Uh, and what then he died, then I went. But by that time, even Granny had sold the house and uh, the, that Deradun connection had gone. It, yes. it, I renewed it later when I was a young man. Uh, but by then, the house had gone too. And uh, where, where we once lived, that old bungalow and with its orchard and garden now there are there's a high rise uh, flats and buildings uh, so the that... house does not exist anymore oh it's it disappeared yes oh, no. <laughs> i also spent a considerable time of my childhood with my grandparents um did your grandmother because you you obviously had more time with your grandmother than you did yes your yes, grandma. with my grandmother quite often How on and too. impact did grandma have on your nani have on your writings? Um well when I 
after she um, I was about probably 17 18 when she uh, when she died um, and I was just finishing school um, so my writing would would have been influenced partly by my father who used to put books my way when I was small I um, and granny had books in her tucked to me in, also in a background I don't think they were I, I didn't see her read a lot but there were books there which I think had belonged possibly to my grandfather or to his mother and because uh-huh. they were books about uh, a lot of them were about South Africa and um, the wealth and, and uh, I think his his mother had grown up in South Africa so there were books about the big Karoo and the little Karoo and um, and the African wealth which I I read so I grew up a lot on books in strange places uh-huh. <laughs> in a, that, in a in a bungalow in the in a forest bungalow in the jungle uh, when I was taken on a hunting trip by my yes. stepfather and I, I didn't like hunting at all so they left me in the dark bungalow and oh. I discovered a shelf of an old shelf full of books which hadn't been touched for years and there I discovered you know, all sorts of writers you know ranging from John Buchan to P.G. Wodehouse and ghost stories, M.R. James. And then in my school in Simla, we had a good library. I have to give uh, yes, credit Cotton's to, to my own library. school, yes, Bishop Books Cotton. Over uh, uh, hundred years. Was, <laughs> I've, so I studied there for eight years, from 1943 to 1950. That's a I long see. time ago. And uh, but they still remember me. Well, I mean, they don't remember of me. Course. but. You uh, must be the uh, star of I your school. Uh, I'm sorry, I remember on. them. <laughs> I would like to read something from your book for you, which is no. the last page of your book. The buffaloes and the frogs had been our only confidants. They had accepted us as a part of their world, their muddy but comfortable pond. And when I left Dera, both they and Ramu must have assumed that I would return again like the birds. So beautifully ended. Thank you for yeah. writing this book. It took me back to my childhood to visit a very special time of my life. And uh, it also creates a glimpse into my childhood for my sons. And most of all, thanks to this book, I got to meet legendary you. I'm a big fan and will always be. And the next generation, my sons are also turning out to be your fans. So I'm so ex- happy the about that. The nice thing about writing for young people is that you... You can go on to the next generation too. <laughs> and um, it's good to be giving pleasure to adults as well as to children. So, and that's, hope to do a little more of it uh, in whatever time is left to me. And uh, thank you so much. I, it's I, I, been my uh, absolute pleasure talking with you. All, all, all Mr. The, Bond fans. Um, sir, what's the pleasure of meeting you? <laughs> thank you. <laughs>